All right, so how you doing boys? Hope you're doing well night in today's video. Back of course with another Time Owl Showcase and we're only two days in to having the brand new Time Owl Global and I did it. I already went ahead and built him his attack crit set. There's just so many teams I want to try him out with where he's in the front and I just want him to be dealing a lot of damage. That's just how I like to use these characters. Of course I'm keeping the HP defense set in. That's what we're going to be using pretty much every time we use him as an association but we have this here. I did actually remove this set from Keo since ever since I made the HP defense set for Keo, I don't think I'm ever going to be using this one ever again. It was a huge mistake. Upon his release, Keo was really good with attack crit. Even then, I'd say on release, he was probably still better HP defense, but hey, that's in the past now. Having a look at the closet here, we have all of his cosmetics, nothing, not a crazy amount of investment. Uh, if you guys don't actually know what the time old does, his first card here inflicts flood damage equal to 500% of attack on one enemy. His second card, for two turns, increase attack of all allies by 45%. Nif taking damage when attacked applies an effect which decreases damage dealt by all enemies by 10% for one turn. His ultimate, which we have 2 6, inflicts detonate damage equal to 462% of attack on all enemies. And then through the long list of graces and uniques, Here's Grace, if the hero is attacked during the enemy's turn, immediately recovers 30% of damage taken. If taking damage twice or more from skills of the same enemy in the same turn, restricts all skill effects, including ultimate moves of the enemies for two turns. Passive reads, all allies' basic stats will increase by 6% every time a hero uses a Grace to restore HP. And last but not least is Holy Relic, applies an ultimate move disable effect for two turns every time an enemy ultimate move gauge reaches five orbs or more. So. Honestly, I know I'm spending so much time reading through all of his stuff. Uh, this is the team we're using today. Pretty much one of my favorite teams in the game. Ludosil is so much fun. Unfortunately, don't have the Holy Relic for Ludose, uh, Ludosil. I will end up making that as of the next week because I'll finally have enough materials. But uh, yeah, let's jump right into it. First opponent here, and I think this may end up being my new favorite Tarmiel skin. At first glance, I wasn't the biggest fan of it, but hey, looking at it in game, especially if match is just a little bit better with the kind of team we're using today. Let's go for... really would have liked to have applied the buff first. I mean, we could possibly kill Meliodas in this first... Oh my god. <laughs> I think... Surely he's missing gear on Meli, there's no way. The CC was a little bit lower. I mean, it's hard to tell because Trader Meli just absolutely blitzes anyone anyways. Also with Tarmiel being able to apply the extra two buffs for Meli is going to help him out a little bit more. We'll... We'll see attacking into Escanor this next turn, but 100,000 right out the gate with no buffs. No passive proc or anything, because he does increase basic stats, as we read before, when he actually heals from cards. It doesn't have to be a certain amount as well, which is really, really nice. Ouch. I mean, goes straight back to a buff for half health, and if we had more cards of his, we could end up using those and getting more HP back. Let's go for that there. That's That pretty much seals out the deal on Escanor. <laughs> Try to melee, just... I go ahead and don't do a couple of PvP showcases with him for like a day or two, use him again and I'm still mind blown by what this unit's capable of. This is of course the Tarmiel showcase though, so we'll try not to abuse Try to melee too much. Uh, full Archangel team, what do we wanna... I think we might try and get rid of... Might try and get rid of Mara first. Use a double single target so he can proc the second half of the melee passive. Also building up his buffs as well. Are we going to potentially kill Margaret right off the bat here? I know those extra two buffs for Melee. Not critting though, is definitely, definitely going to make it do otherwise. Ooh. Not terrible card draw there. The level one, does the level one last two turns or one turn? Only last the one turn. I hate that about buff effects when certain buffs or stances. I'd rather the multipliers be weaker and have them last for two turns. Ouch, Tommy will take quite a bit of damage from Sarah, which is expected he's got the Holy Relic and all that kind of stuff. Mm. Let's go for, we'll get the ultimate there. And then I feel like with that, we should be able to kill Margaret with the melee AoE. Attacking into Tommy all that way, he takes the double damage. I know it is type disadvantage, but hey, we'll be right, we'll be right. Ugh. Still not killing with the melee. I was a little unsure about Tarmiel, or should I say melee killing Margaret, but we'll be fine. We've got the ultimate here. If we could get a couple of ultimate gauge for Margaret, that'd be really nice. Mm. Once again, we're gonna lose the buff effect. That's so annoying, man. Oh, we're losing the ultimate anyways. Is that gonna give us a Ludo ult? No, there's still 
a while's away off that one. Okay. You can see the skill effect blocking as well from... I can't tell from memory if it's his passive, his holy relic, or his... It's definitely not his grace, I know that for sure, but... As you can see there, even though Tamiya has the ultimate, I'm still going to get the kill on Tamiya anyways. Just that way we can use our ultimate in these next coming turns. You can see in the top left, the ultimate's disabled. And with Marvel gone, they have no way of cleansing that. And then melee cleans up, as per usual. Damn, I really would have liked to have gotten an ultimate off in that turn. I'm sure we'll... We have a couple more matches, so we'll get plenty of ults. And a... Ooh. I really like when people use Jack of Light Gotho with Trader Melee. The amount of synergy you get using them together, they are completely different units, and that's why it works so well. Gonna definitely check when it comes back to our turn if the Lolly Merlin has the Tarmiel Grace. I've almost got the Merlin Holy Relic, so definitely going to get that done, because using Merlin with the Tarmiel as association for the Grace effect has been all the talk as of recent. I'm super, super excited to actually try that out. We are taking a lot more damage than I would like to. Uh... Just because I think it's going to be the best play here. And, oh, we have Infect. Uh, okay, going for this instead. If we didn't have the Infect on us, I would have gone for melee single target into double AOE just for the lifesteal. I feel like we should still be all right here. Yeah, that... Mm. Once again, debuff units are coming stronger and stronger just because there's no one to stop them. Really hoping for the third year. We end up getting some kind of festival that cleanses debuffs as part of their passive, because we have units like Kyo when that can dish out. I feel like it may be just a little bit broken, but look at what we have here. And we have units like Tarmiel releasing and Power Creep is happening. It's eventually going to get to the point where cleansing as part of your passive is going to be a normal thing. Maybe it's only for the character. Maybe it's a debuff at random throughout the team. Maybe it's a debuff on every character. I'd really like to see them implement something like that. Losing the melee. Uh... <clears throat> Hmm. Have the alt seal on Gotha, so we don't have to worry about that as of yet. I know it's probably not the smartest idea in the world. I'm just going to go for that to maximize card draw. Get rid of all the time meal cards. Leave the Lodosial ones open to potentially draw in. Well, I didn't even hit damage cap on either of them. I'm <laughs> kind of disappointing, boys. What's going on? That ult seal will last two turns as well, so don't have to worry about that. The Jack of Light ultimate isn't anything crazy powerful anyways, so we can ignore that for pretty much the rest of the match. Even 6-6, six, 6-6 six, six, six Jack of Light Gotha has the same damage multiplier as 1-6 Purgatory Barn. Only reason I compared them two is because they are the only two... I believe they're the only two... Yeah, they're the only two characters in the game whose ultimates are based off of their HP stats. Still, though, the utility you get out of the Gotha ultimate, although I agree, Gotha's kit is very well done. The ultimate is a little lackluster. It definitely could have been just a tad bit stronger. Let's... Let's go for that there. That'll get us both the ultimates, and although we are going to tank the... I think the Gotha ultimate can delete ultimates, can't it? We really didn't kill Merlin. Oh, come on. Come on, and watch us not get... Hmm... It's been too long since I've used the Gotha. I swear it does delete ultimates, though. I think the ultimate is another one of those ones where it gets extra effects upon getting high ult levels. Let's... Let's see, though. Ragnarok Barn coming to the front isn't helping our case either. I really like what they did with his passive. We were in desperate need of a new backline support, and I like that he supports any team offensively and defensively. Oh, losing Lidocil. And deletes the ultimate, yeah. Damn, we really ended up losing. I mean, we got out CC'd. It's, it wasn't guaranteed, but unfortunate it happened. And if you guys have summoned for the Tarmiel and been fortunate enough to pull him, let me know what kind of teams you guys have been using the Tarmiel with and whether or not you've been enjoying, because I know I've only done a couple PvP videos now, but I've been having heaps and heaps of fun. Uh, let's... Hmm, definitely want to get rid of Trader Melee. Uh, I would like the extra card draw from using the Ludo single target, but Ludo, Ludo can't crit anymore and Ludo just doesn't deal damage. Oh my god. <laughs> Definitely should have used the AoE if I hadn't known that would happen. The Tarmiel's still looking really impressive. I feel like if we could use... Mm, not sure if I want to use a Lodosiel Halloween Gotha team. 
alongside him, or maybe like a Keo, Halloween Gotha, Keo Ludosil maybe, and pray for good to card RNG. Something like that, just to try and see if we can fully min-max the amount of damage we can do, because when it comes to full offensiveness, I feel like this is the best team we can use, but you can use double supports and end up making Tamiel do even more damage than he's currently doing. We'll use the double. We'll use one Ludo single target and get the extra buffs there. Uh, that will get us to time ult. For some reason I'm doubting that'll kill. I think we'll do more damage with that. Yeah, Ludo. I keep putting faith in Ludo Seal's damage ability. He is, he is not all that anymore. Ouch. <laughs> Melly definitely. Oh, no, mind. He's... How does man do one? One star AoE and just go straight back to full health. I didn't even think about it either. He can't even use the one ultimate because of Tarmiel. Damn, that is... A whole lot of people are probably going to be falling for that as well because man's only just released and there's so many parts about his kit that it's hard to remember it all. Let's go. Can't believe he actually got that. Let's... Hmm. I'm gonna use a flood cut. I'm also gonna put the melee one into him just in case. Oh, okay. Damn. Imagine if you could have his passive as well when using him in the back. That would be so ridiculous. Passive, holy relic, all the sort. That would make the Archangel so broken. A little unfortunate about the demon race now that. Oh, I'll continue this into the next match. But what I was going to say was it's a little unfortunate for demon characters now that they've been power prepped and the Archangels are here that. Using it as an association doesn't give anywhere near as much value as it would using Tarmiel, Blue Tarmiel, the Sariels, Lidosil, and Margaret. I doubt they'll ever change that as well. Make the, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Make the commandments apply in the front. It's too late now, but I mean, maybe in future, if we end up getting Demon King as a character, I do see them potentially doing something with that, making it so you can use a certain effect of his as an association. When are we ever going to get the Demon King and the Supreme Deity? Because I feel like that'll definitely happen eventually and we'll get them as play, uh, playable characters. I could imagine they will be downsized though to look like the Dosi on top. Or oh, in saying that, no, you just, you can't fit the Demon King on the screen because the Giants, are they still downsized? I feel like they're still really, really tall. Hmm. Surely that can, I might actually end up single targeting Margaret instead just because she hasn't got the defense down and maybe we can finish this off in two turns. Ridiculous that I can say that, but Melly is just, Melly is all that. So glad they gave him this skin as well. Yeah, look at that, man is, man is broken. Tarmiel is also extremely broken and almost as good as Melly since this is the Tarmiel showcase. There we go, and that just about does it for today's video. I think from now on, I'm going to stop using Trader Melly in showcases just because he ends up completely outshining other use. I wouldn't even say he outshined Tarmiel by far. Tarmiel being a character that has a buff card, he is also going to make Meliodas look a lot better than he usually does as well. So it's kind of a given. Still really impressed with how much damage he can get with one and two flood cards. It is the flood effect and the amount of utility you get out of his passive grace and holy relic. Tarmiel is an amazing, amazing unit. Definitely seen being up there in PvP, but I give him... I feel like I'd give him an S tier. There are quite a few characters in that S tier, probably like, uh, it's been quite a while since I've actually thought of a tier list. Probably like 10, 12 characters I'd put in that tier maybe, but Tarmel is definitely one of them. He works so, so well in PvP. Going to be trying him out in the deer raid within the next couple of videos. And if you guys are interested in more Tarmel content, please do leave a like in the video and subscribe because you're going to be seeing a whole lot of it. Uh, that just about does it for today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed. Please hit the like button, subscribe. Really means a lot to me and I'll see you guys for some more. Brand cross content.